boys and girls. Welcome to Disastrously Domestic, my vlog slash podcast thing that I do um, semi-regularly. Um, I feel like it's been a million years since I've talked into the camera, staring at myself right now. Um, but, you know, it's been... Not for any particular reason, just life, you know. I have, uh, oh, wait, before, before I even go any further, I need to say, I'm Sugar Sticks on Ravelry. I'm disastrously underscore domestic on Instagram. And I'm Jessica in real life. <laughs> or Jez, whatever, you know, something like that. And I'm a little bit sad right now that you guys can't see my dress. So I'm going to show it to you. Ah, look at that! It's so cute! It's unicorns! Yeah, unicorns. Because some days, you dress the way you feel. And other days, you dress the way you want to feel. Did that make sense? I'll let you decide what kind of day this is. God, I'm loopy. Um, I dropped my son off at school and I came back home and I've just been like drinking all kinds of coffee and I'm all jazzed. Are you jazzed? <laughs> Are you jazzed? Um, Space Ghost reference in case you didn't know. And if you did know, we can be friends. Now, this is a knitting podcast mostly. So let's get into it, I guess. I've been working on some stuff. I've been working on some stuff and I've been finishing some stuff. First things I have to show you are two pairs of socks. Not just one, two. Who am I? I'm Jessica. That's who I am. And they are hiding out somewhere. Where are they? Here they are. So, I have two pairs of socks. And these are going to go in my box of socks, which is right here. But I'm going to unfold these and show them to you. So the first pair is the Fine and Dandy pattern by The Sweater Co. And I know that last episode I showed one that I had completed. And now I have two. I love the stitch pattern on this. It was a little tricky at first, but I got the hang of it pretty quickly. And my gauge was whack, but I also figured that out. I've realized something about myself. And sock knitting. I always used to knit my socks on size twos. Regardless of what the pattern said, I pretty much always did twos because I always felt like I'm a super tight knitter. And that, and I am, it's true. So I always did twos. These I knit on size ones and they're perfect. I have pretty narrow feet, I think. So if they're a little smaller than the pattern, I think it's okay, as long as I knit them long enough. Um, but anyway, the yarn for this is Cherry Tree Hill, the main color, which I'm not sure if that company still exists, if anybody knows. I haven't seen or heard anything from them in a really long time. So, um, And then the blue is Dream in Color Starry. You can see a little bit of the sparkle if I move it. Maybe. Mm. It's not super sparkly. I got it from their second sale, and the second sale was stuff that is maybe not up to their standards for something they would sell at full price. So um, I was lucky enough to catch one of their second sales. What else to say about these? I blocked them on sock blockers, and yeah, they're done. They were knit pretty quickly. I don't know if I've knit a pair of socks this quickly before. Oh wait, I have this pair. 
This is the Self Striping Socks Pattern, very aptly named, by Shara Giles. And it has this um, cool lace pattern that if you have a self striping yarn, it kind of makes like a wave effect. And I only did half of the leg with that pattern because I really kind of liked the way the striping was just on the vanilla side. So I continued with that. I did a uh, afterthought heel of some kind, something I came up with. And I cast these on and knit them since the last episode. I didn't even have this yarn when I recorded last time. This is the Slytherin yarn from Creative Spark Yarns. Because I'm a Slytherin. Let me just put that out there. Yes, ma'am. And I knit them. And I put them in the thread for the Knitting Broomsticks Harry Potter Knit Along which is ending soon. Maybe by the time this gets edited and posted, it'll already be over. I think it's the 30th of April. But yay, two pairs of socks. What the hell, who am I? So I, I, w I was wondering something. How do you guys store your socks that you knit? I know that I mentioned in an episode when I came back to this whole podcast thing, that I am a fan of Marie Kondo. She wrote the life-changing magic of tidying up, and she has a new one out as well, newish last year, I think it came out. And she has got me into like clever ways of storing things and folding. Which is why I fold my socks. I fold my store-bought socks this way as well. And then when you put them in to storage, they look really, really nice. So I have one more FO to show. Uh, well, I take that back. I don't have it to show. It is soaking in the sink right now. I finished the Follow Your Arrow Shawl, the first one, um, by Isolde Teague. And that is um, Knit in My Hand Spun yarn. And I used just about all that I had. <laughs> and I had like teeny tiny little ball and I thought I would have enough left over to include it in my scrap blanket but I don't even have enough for that so um, played a little bit of yarn chicken but yeah maybe I'll insert a picture of it here um, as it's blocking and then I'll I'll definitely show it in the next episode in person I'll probably wear it or something I don't know um, so yeah that's it for FOS for me I feel like it's pretty productive week or so, two weeks. And I've been working on some whips, as one does when they knit obsessively. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna show is another pair of socks. Um, I had cast on ages ago the, can you hear my dog barking? Cause I can. Um, the Jaywalker socks by Grumperina. And I was going to pick them back up and continue working on them, but I was looking at it and I was like, uh, I don't really remember what row I was on. It's a two row repeat. It would have been okay. I probably could have figured it out, but I just decided to frog it because I only had like this much. And I don't know. The pattern wasn't jiving with me. Didn't really want to do it. So I ripped it out and I started a new sock with the yarn. This is the pattern from Knitting Vintage Socks by Nancy Bush. This is the Gentleman's Fancy Sock pattern. 
Um, that pattern is a cuff down, gusseted heel type pattern, and I like to knit toe up. And so I just sort of borrowed the stitch pattern and changed the stitch count as well because it was wanting you to cast on like 70 stitches or something because it's meant for a man with big old feet. You know what they say. Big socks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this yarn is my own hand dyed yarn. Um, Self striping. Yay! So that's just one one sock that I have there. Started making some progress on it. Um, second thing is the sock head hat. I put a few rows of progress on this. Not a ton. Um, I know I showed it before. Uh oh, my ball just fell. And that's my pattern that I'm using. The textured eyelet pattern. I borrowed from the Vildesmer shawl that I completed. So, ah, uh, maybe it's halfway done, about. You know, I've got the, the locks, so I want it to be roomy. Um, and I get headaches, so I didn't want it to be tight. And I went up a needle size to make sure that it was nice and roomy. But yes, this yarn is uh, Manos del Uruguay Alegria in a crazy bright color that I love. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to working on this a little bit more. I was very focused on finishing that shawl. So my other projects kind of got ignored. So that's two. The third whip is my Enchanted Mesa sweater. I am in love with this thing. So I don't know how I'm gonna show this. Okay, so see that stitch marker? That's where I was last time I showed this on the podcast. So I finished the body. It's nice and long. I did end up uh, making it quite a bit longer than the pattern. It pretty much covers my butt completely, which is what I wanted. <laughs> and I tried it on, the fit of it is maybe a little more snug than I was hoping, but it certainly has positive ease still. I was just hoping for something a little more dramatic in the oversized department, but I am happy with it nonetheless. And I finished a sleeve and I just repeated the color sequence that you see in the upper section. And I did a stripe with the main color. And they're nice and long sleeves. They come down to Eh, like here, and I imagine that when I block it, it's going to stretch. And I've got the other sleeve off onto my needles. And now it is in timeout because I ran out of the gray main color yarn. So I ordered more, and it has not arrived yet, and I'm very sad. But once it gets here, I know that I'll finish that sleeve in probably two days because this one, this sleeve took me like the weekend to finish. So I cannot wait to wear this beautiful thing. It's so cute. It's so cute. I'm so excited. Steven West, I love you. Thank you for being you. So yeah, I uh, am very excited about finishing that. I might have a sweater to show. Uh, other sweater that I was working on last podcast really doesn't look very different. It is the Honey Bee Cardigan by Laura Chow. And I'm knitting it in Knit Picks. Preciosa. Pre <sighs> Preciosa. That one. Yeah. My precious. 
So, hardly any uh, change there, you might say. Maybe one row. I love the color and I can't wait to like get done with this ribbing slog that I'm in. I'll persevere and I'll get through it. I will. I'll be okay. Other whips. Other whips. I have a lot of whips. In case you didn't know. I know I mentioned in the last podcast that I ordered yarn and that yarn arrived. It is Madeline Tosh DK in these lovely colors. This is called Resin. And this one is called Court and Spark, I believe. I thought they went really nicely together. I wasn't sure when I ordered them if they were going to mesh well together. It's very hard to make those decisions online. But I'm so pleased. So super pleased. And the pattern that I am knitting them up into is the Equinox Scarf by Cassandra Rizzardi of Rizanit's podcast. And this is what I have so far. It's made to resemble trees. And I chose this to kind of be like birch sort of colors. And this is my sky color. I know what you're thinking. What the hell kind of sky looks like that? I'll tell you what kind of sky post-apocalyptic hell sky looks like this. That's right. My husband loves Mad Max, and incidentally, his name is Max. Uh, <laughs> Maxime, but Max, you know, whatever. And so I, I was trying, I knew I wanted to do the trees as birch trees because I love them. They are sacred to me. Let it be known that I love birch trees and I think they're beautiful and so I wanted birch but I'm not, I didn't want to do blue and I didn't want to do black and so I was trying to think of a nice color that I could use in lieu of your typical sky colors and I really love dystopian future scenarios um, and so I thought this really looked like a scorched sky that's like horribly polluted and gross and um, <laughs> So that's what I'm going for. This is my apocalyptic equinox. Um, and I'm going to pull up on my phone here. Sorry, I'm looking down. Do you see that? Oh no, don't turn. Look at how cool it is. So yeah, some of the effect of the trees might be lost on mine because of my color choices, but I'm willing to live with that. Because um, it just looks so cool. Doesn't look like much yet though. But I am very excited about it. And I'm using my straights. I like straights, okay? I know a lot of people don't, but I really, really do. And I have been trying to use them more often. So these are carbons. First time using carbons, and they're all right. They're all right. Anyway, I have two more whips to chat about. One is knitting, of course. And it is a, um, a forever project that I've shown before, but I wanted to show it again because I've made a few decisions about it and I've put a little bit of progress into it. It is my scrap blanket similar to the Cozy Memories blanket of, you know, podcast fame. <laughs> and I have, I, I started doing these little squares, which are really fun. And I had decided that I was going to do special squares larger. If it's like special yarn, or yarn that I dyed myself, I wanted to sort of showcase it, and so I thought that's what I was going to do. 
and then have most of my squares be little. I decided against that. I decided that I actually really like the larger squares more than the smaller squares, and I might actually have a chance of finishing it <laughs> if my squares are a little bit larger. And since most of this yarn is left over from socks, and like I said, I have smaller feet, um, average size feet, I'm a size six and a half, seven. Um, I usually have a lot of yarn left over when I knit socks, so it felt wasteful to get rid of yarn after knitting these teensy little squares. I thought about starting the entire blanket over, but I did already have like this square and this one here. And they were special yarns and I did not have any more. So I decided that I would just start from here on out doing the larger squares only. And I'm using size 3 signature needles. Focus on the needle. Which have the stiletto point. Super, super sharp. Ah! Stabby, stabby. Anyway, these are deadly weapons, like I was saying. I store this project up high in that green and blue, blue, not green, long a burger basket. Because I am terrified <laughs> that my son is going to get a hold of this and run with it and, like, just stab himself in the jugular. I have anxiety, and it's always the worst case scenario with these things. It's not he'd fall and maybe stab himself. No, it'll go in his jugular, and he will bleed everywhere, and that'll be it. That's just, yeah. If you have anxiety, um, then you get why I keep these up high. <laughs> so yeah, this is super, super, super fun. And I'm running out of yarns to stick in it, so I am joining a swap that's being put on by Legacy Knits and the Grocery Girls podcasts. And I've never done a swap before, and I'm terrified. But I figured if you're going to swap something, swap with knitters, because they're usually good people, right? We're usually good people. Hold on, I need to get a drink of something. Mm. Today I'm drinking coffee. It's a local blend from the local coffee shop. All right, anyway. Um, what else? I have one more whip, and it's not knitting. That's right, I do other things too. This podcast is not called Knitting with Jessica. It's called Disastrously Domestic. So anything that falls under domesticity... I'm into that as well, but it just hasn't come up until now. I pulled my sewing machine out of obscurity because I fell in love with a pattern that I saw someone on Instagram had sewn up. This is called the Dottie Angel Frock by Dottie Angel. She has an Instagram. Look her up because she does really awesome stuff. And she does awesome embroidery as well. So if you're into that. But this is a simplicity pattern that I picked up at Joanne when I found it online. I decided that I'd see if they had it and they did. So apparently for a while it was hard to find this. Luckily I wasn't into it at that time. So. And I started it. So I will first show you, I'm going to show you the front piece. This is the front progress that I have. It's got these little tucks here. Oh, that's so hard to see. Damn it. Okay, well, anyway, it's got a drawstring that goes around, ties in the back. So I'm using, my main fabric is this blue and white polka dot. Pokey spots. And the bottom hem area is this really cool 
kind of pinwheel looking geometric pattern. It reminded me of like MC Escher. <laughs> so I thought that was cool. And then the pockets. I have not completed the pockets yet. They are almost done. But the pockets are this cute bird fabric. Put a bird on it. So I think it'll look kind of cute, right? All three together. So you can kind of see the three prints together. I don't know. And these pockets are going to have a bias binding around them. So I made this bias tape. So that's going to go around the raw edge here. So yeah, I've been sewing and I've just fallen right back into it. I used to make a lot of costumes and I still do. I mean, I still love costuming, uh, cosplay and whatnot, but uh, I really haven't been doing a lot of sewing and I was surprised by how quickly I just picked everything back up. Um, it's really built into your muscle memory after a while. Um, and dressmaking is just a joy. I love making garments more than I like quilting. I prefer to do quilting by hand. I love hand sewing. I'm one of those people. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. Maybe I'll have that on next time. Maybe, maybe. Um, yeah. I wanna make like a million of them because it's so easy and so cute. Background. So I got a new shelf here um, because I was really jelly of <laughs> other podcasters who have like their stash behind them and it's epic and amazing. And I don't have such a stash. I have a little bit, but I thought it'd be cute to like stick some little guys back here that I, I made. I made him. This is Bonk by Susan Claudino. I think it's Bonk. And I love him. This yarn is an alpaca worsted weight from Diabolical Yarns. Eee, he's so cute. I love him. And then I have another friend right here. This is a crocheted one. <laughs> Do you like Futurama? because I like Futurama. I knit this, uh, or crocheted this a really long time ago. I also have, and I was trying to find him, he's missing, I knit him for, I crocheted him, sorry, crocheted him for my son. I made Nibbler from Futurama. Look him up, he's cute. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about this. I've got Stash, I've got some friends. I've got up, up here, Little Chiburashka, Gina Crocodile, right there. <laughs> if you like Chiburashka. Um, yeah, I got those in Russia. <laughs> and to people waiting for souvenirs, sorry, I suck. I don't like going to the post office. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm excited about this. It's a little cramped in this space now because I, you know, because this obviously takes up some space, but it works, it works. Um, Let's see. One other thing I wanted to talk about was not FOs, not whips, but things that I'm planning to cast on in the very near future. So one of those things is is a pair, another pair of socks. I'm going to use this knitted wit yarn that I showed last time. I'm going to be casting on the coupling socks which is a Nitty.com pattern. And it's a free pattern, of course, because it's on Nitty. And that's hard to see, but you get the idea. They're kind of like a lacy pattern. And I've got my needles set aside. Signature needles again. It seems like I have a lot of signature needles, but I don't. I have, I have three sets of signature needles. I wish I had a full collection, let me tell you. So that's one thing that I'm casting on. 
The other thing that I'm going to be casting on is the Knit and Slide Shawl by Stephen West. It has a really interesting border. Look at him. He's glorious. I just love him. I never get enough. I never get enough Stephen West. Um, and so the yarn that I'm using for that is right here. Look how handy this is, having this right here. Okay, so the top section of it, I'm going to be striping these two. This pink is Cascade Alpaca Lace that I've had in stash for a really long time. And this is Dream in Color Wisp in a really pretty sea foamy green color. I got this from the anniversary sale at Webb's, so it was very affordable. This is also stash. This is what the most of the border is going to be this, and then the edging is going to be this fuzzy. It looks white, but it's actually kind of like a minty green color. So all these together, I think are going to make a really nice springy shawl. And, I'm, and they're all lace weight. The pattern calls for fingering, but I'm going to do lace weight. So I'm very excited about these colors. They're so light. I have been trying to lighten my wardrobe a little bit. I have a lot of earth tones, and um, I think because spring's here, I, I want some pretty pastels and, and stuff. So yay! I'm excited about that one. And as soon as my ball winder arrives, <laughs> I'm going to be starting that because usually I wind my yarn by hand. I have a Swift. My ball winder broke a few years ago and I never replaced it. And usually I'm okay with it, winding my hand. I actually like the way hand wound balls look, um, especially with striping yarns. But these are lace weight, like I said. It's a lot of yardage crammed in here. Um, 550 yards of lace weight. This one's like 400 something. I'm not gonna do it by hand. I'm not. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. I'm going to wait for a ball winder to arrive. I ordered it on Amazon. I paid the five dollars for same-day delivery because I'm a Prime member and I'm going to take advantage of same-day delivery. <laughs> um, so as soon as that comes, I'm going to be winding these up and starting that. I'm very, 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 very excited, Stephen West. Um, <laughs> ah, you know, I'm a fangirl. So I mentioned before that I went to an anime convention here in Seattle. Um, and that I was not going to be able to attend the anime convention that I have been attending since 2003 uh, in Chicago Anime Central. And I was kind of sad about it because this would be the first time I've missed it <laughs> since 2003. Like, I'm a vet. And we moved, so I really thought that we weren't going to be able to go, especially since we went to Russia. Um, however, something occurred, <laughs> and we are in fact going to be heading to Chicago in May, so we decided that we might as well go to Anime Central. <laughs> so I am very excited, and of course, as I, I said before, like I like to costume, I like cosplay, and so I decided that I'm gonna dress up this year as Harley Quinn a la Suicide Squad because um, I liked her roller derby look. Really wish I could do roller derby but I'm a frail fragile bird bone person <laughs> so, so roller derby maybe won't work for me but you know whatever I could dream. Um, so I decided that I was gonna 
wear that outfit. And so I ordered the pieces that I need. I wasn't about to try to sew it myself because I don't have a serger and I didn't want to deal with like stretchy material. I mean, I know there's ways around it and I've done it, but I don't want to. So I ordered costume pieces for that and I chose Harley Quinn because I love her, but also because my hair is pretty light right now and wearing a wig with dreads is not very fun. So I wanted to find something that I would be able to wear without having to get a wig. So I am planning on lightening my hair a little bit and uh, I'll pull it up into pigtails and I'm gonna kind of dye the ends blue and red um, like Harley's. So I'm excited. I'm nervous because it's kind of, it's a little bit sexy, right? Harley's outfit. So I don't know. <laughs> I do cute costumes usually. I, I do cute pretty well. Um, I, sexy? Ooh, maybe not for me, but we'll see. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to lighten my hair. I haven't decided how I'm going to do it. I know I need to take care of my roots. They're pretty intense, but yeah. I might do, just do a color remover um, to get some of the red out and then do like a toner. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Details, details, details. But yeah, I'm so excited to go to Asa and I really thought I wasn't going to make it. And of course there are no hotel rooms anymore. <laughs> But luckily, I have a friend, and she's going to let us uh, hang out with her in her room. <laughs> it's good to got, good to got people. Yeah. Um, so, if you're going to ASEN, hit me up. I don't have anything else, really, to share. I don't, I don't think. It's been getting very, very sunny and very nice here in Seattle. And I think this weekend we might go to the zoo. Check out the zoo here. I'm spoiled by the St. Louis Zoo. That is my favorite zoo. And that is where I grew up. And I love that zoo. And like, I, I, you know, living in Chicago, there's the Brookfield Zoo. And it's a decent zoo. But St. Louis Zoo is my favorite zoo. <laughs> STL pride. Um, how about them blues? Right? Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and don't mind my rambling and my sudden burst of energy and screaming in your face, um, please subscribe, like, comment. Uh, I have a Ravelry group. You can go ahead and join that. Again, I'm Sugar Sticks on Ravelry if you want to friend me there. And I'm disastrously underscore domestic on Instagram. Uh, and I have a Facebook page as well. Um, so yeah, I guess just like chat me up if you want. Right? Um, until next time.